welcome to yet another exciting episode of Family Edition. I'm your host, Liquiani Ellie. Allow me to welcome Coach Collins Bolo. Mr. Bolo is the founder of Family Health, Life Skills and Career Development. He is also an expert leadership and relationship coach, specialist in psychometric, professional speaker, clergyman, and certified grief and loss therapist. He is equally a mediator, MTI. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Collins Bolo. Early, early, early crime rate. By the way, do we have any country with no prison? I think crime rate takes place everywhere. However, from the findings with a lot of psychologists, sociologists in our society, there's a lot of connection between crime rate and perpetrators from family systems. And the question you're asking yourself is this, does marriage really matter as far as crime and domestic violence is concerned? Absolutely, marriage matters. Now, why is marriage matter in control of crime and domestic violence? Now, it has been found out that boys, I'm very specific, boys raised in single parented families, boys raised in single parented families have high chances in getting to a lot of crimes in a society in comparison to boys who have been raised in a more stable, healthy family. Meaning that the parenting role of a parent towards the boy child is very key on the behavior of the child or the boy child tomorrow. Now, boy child who grows up not by his own will, finding himself growing up from a single parented home. You see, life has been designed in a way that negative cannot be positive. Negative attracts the positive, but both are so much different. Now, in the same way, when it comes to parenting, the virtue, the excellent good virtue of a mother who raises a boy child, it cannot be upgraded so that she becomes a mother and a father to the boy child. In the same way, the virtue of a father who raises his son or daughter cannot be upgraded so that it becomes the father and mother. Those are sentiments which sound good to our ears, but as far as nurturing of our children and parenting is concerned, the game is so much different because this world is controlled and governed by principles and laws. And when it comes to parenting, one of the key principles in parenting is every child who gets born is as though he has a sponge which needs to be poured inside it with the love of the father and the love of the mother. And then the child to be intentionally parented to grow to be the best it can be more than the parents. Now, it has been found that, that a boy child who grows from a single parented family, high chances, not all the time because you have Young boys who have been raised with parent, who are a single parent and they have become the best they can be. And most of the time you realize that when they become the best they can be, there are other stakeholders who came in for the support of the boy child. In the comparison to the boy just growing with one virtue of the mom without the virtue of the father, the masculinity aspect. Now, when this boy grows up without that masculine part of him, been grown and developed there are so many dynamics of challenges which gets to this young boy while growing up towards becoming a man history has shown that most of our boys who grow from single parented home they're likely to engage in activity and criminal behaviors no wonder 80 percent of prisoners male prisoners they're coming from either dysfunctional homes or single parented homes Meaning that a man, father, plays a very key role towards making the boy child to grow to become a responsible citizen in his society. 
But the moment it misses up, it becomes irresponsible. It cannot face life and confront life to succeed. Now in that process, then it gets to developing attitudes whereby it wants things without fighting for it positively and working for it, leading to crime. If we want crime to stop in our society, every man must be responsible on his or her sexual activity, meaning that it becomes extremely unfair for men to deposit their spams without regulating it with the consequences which come with it. And our women need to understand, when the deal between you is the game, but not production, safeguard and necessary production of children. They'll grow up to become criminals because the moment the man will discover you are giving what he did not intend, he'll run away. Remember as I told you, for men, love is commitment, it's not a feeling. And sex for men does not mean necessarily love. If I'm thirsty and I drink water, does it mean I love water? That's the mind of a man. But for women, sex is emotion. When she opens her leg to you, there must be an emotional connection unless it is prostitution. Now the challenge is most of the time women tend to think like women, assuming men think in the same way. No wonder, most of the time, women rush to speak words like I love you very much faster than men who understand what love is and it's all about commitment. Now, let us not increase the population unnecessarily, not knowing the kind of people you are going to produce by not giving parental love required. Crime rate will go down when men will take responsibility to keep their zips up and women to tighten their feet. And we are going to have a better world for tomorrow. Not only that, on issues of crime and violence, also it has been found out that <clears throat> married men and women are significantly less likely to become perpetrators as far as or committing crime. Because most of the married men and women, they know that they have a responsibility for themselves and for raising up their children. So anything which can jeopardize them to get to become perpetrators or to get into crime, they tend to avoid as much as possible. Into comparison to a mature man or a mature lady who is undergoing crisis and he wants to have a breakthrough and probably there's a deal which they have to do. If they're not, if they're not attached to responsibilities, they can take the risk to do the crime. We want our crime levels to go down. Let us encourage people to take responsibility of building one another through a system of family structure system called marriage. That's very key and very important. Also, it has been found out that married women appear to have low risks of getting to crime. Why? Because they know that they have a responsibility in life. And if they get into crime, they are going to be detached from their children who help them to practice their motherhood. No wonder men are more in prison than our female. But in the society, women tend to be much more populated than the men. What's the difference? The instinct of the mother always makes her to play safe because of the responsibility she has. In comparison for men, men by nature, our life is all about risk. And women need to understand every time your man leaves your house, it's another day for taking another chance and a risk if you'll get something to bring back home. And in those risks, sometimes men go further to do crime and to do shady things to get money and to please their women. Now, smart and wise women know one thing. When this man gets back home, whether it's clean money or dirty money, make him still to feel he's a king. When he's a rat at workplace and you make him a cockroach at home, you remain a wanderer in your house. 
crime rates can go down if men and women we take responsibility to control our day-to-day -day ventures understanding the concepts which we need so married women appear to have more lower risks and again not only lower risk in crime even married women have lower risk of violence in comparison to cohabiting why women and dating women now cohabiting women are women who are behaving as though they are married but they're not married they know deep inside they're not married this is just a guy who is helping to to buffer the economical crisis in the city or in the village or in the college in exchange of let me give let, let me have hope i'll give you children then you can commit yourself not understanding men are not mothers so that they can feel for the children like they feel as a mother now most of the cohabiting mothers and dating mothers unfortunately it has been proven that they have more high risk of experiencing domestic violence why if a man has not committed himself and was not committed from the beginning and in his picture about future he does not see you as the mother of his children in case of crisis slapping you is not a second thought most of domestic violence, if you go closer, it is either dating mothers or cohabiting mothers than married. And those who are married, when they see things are bad and they, have, they can get a way out to solve the problem, they can commit themselves. Why? Men's love is commitment by action. Women is emotional, then commitment by life. That's why women we leave all that they can to go for the man. But are all men committed? That's the biggest challenge you have today. Because most of the men are men biologically, but emotionally and personality, they are still women. That's a discussion for another day in its own. And as I finish this episode, are you aware that a child who is not living with his or her own parent is at a more higher risk of being abused as a child? I've been having so many cases in my therapy room of people, clients coming to me and when they give me their story about abuse, it was so much connected to them staying with a relative or a neighbor or a well-wisher than the safety they got when they stayed with their parents. And majority of cases like rape, they happen from people who are close to the victim of rape. Like at the case of this young girl who was being raised by the single mama, then due to a lot of crisis which were taking place, the mother decided to get somebody else as a husband and they started cohabiting. So now we have the stepfather in quotes, the mother and the stepchild. Then within the same vicinity, we had an uncle, the brother to the father. One day this girl was kicked out of school because she did not, she had not paid a school fee. It was during exam period. So when she was just out of school, she went home and she was crying so much. Lo and behold, she meets with the uncle, but not real uncle because he's a brother to the stepfather. So in the process of trying to console her because of the situation she was in, the uncle raps her. Here she is crying, feeling dirty and abused. Then in the process, the stepfather comes in, finding this young lady crying, and she could not explain that she had just been raped by the brother to the stepfather. Then the stepfather also raps her at the same time. Why? She's not a father. The guy, the guy is not a father. 
is there because of the mother of this child. She becomes pregnant. Is the pregnancy for the uncle or the father? Will the child call the stepfather father or the uncle? The mystery she will die with. Marriage and family becomes the best platform to secure our children from violence, abuse, and getting to issues of crime. Then, is it appropriate to decide not to marry? If you feel like you have a gift of being single the rest of your life, first ask yourself these questions. Is it because of bitterness of being booted so many times and breaking of your emotions and your heart? If the answer is no, what are you intending to do in substitution to what marriage is all about? Then go for it. The good book says to be single is better than to be married because if you are single, your focus is to serve God alone. But if you are married, you have to be give your loyalty to God and your spouse. There's nothing wrong to decide not to get married, but you have to make sure that your reason is nothing to do with the predicaments surrounding our world and within your world. But it has all to do with the service you want to commit yourself to. But if you are intending to get into marriage, I'll finish by saying this. Remember, marriage is a deliberate step to take a risk to live with a stranger with hope of a good future. Thank you very much. Let's connect next time and learn from one another. God bless you. Thank you, Ellie, as we meet in our next family edition. We are glad that you could join us tonight. Join us next week as we bring you yet another exciting episode of Family Edition. Till next time, my name is Likuyani Ellie.